I'm an aunt to six young kids who need good education and need hope and opportunity who live in the state of Georgia. And I want them to grow up in a state and in a nation that values who they are. Welcome to another edition of Hashtag She Talk. It's where I, Milani Kai, go one-on-one with prominent women from various walks of life, not only to celebrate their accomplishments and achievements, but to go behind the scenes, see what it is they're up to, also known as being nosy straight up. I'm here for it. My next guest is no stranger to Hashtag She Talk. She's been on before. She is the sole Democratic gubernatorial candidate for the great state of Georgia. Last time she was on, she wasn't president of the United Earth, but now she is. So Stacey Abrams, welcome <laughs> back to Hashtag She Talk. Thank you for having me. You are fresh off of One Georgia Tour, and you had a lot of events, Albany, Atlanta, Augusta, Athens, all around Georgia. I'm curious as to why the name One Georgia? I grew up in Gulfport, Mississippi, before we moved to Atlanta. And even though Gulfport was an important city in the state, we were so far away from the capital so far away from Jackson. When I moved to Georgia, I saw the same thing happening here, that if you lived in Atlanta, you were close to the decisions being made. And if you lived anywhere else, you sometimes felt that there were two Georgias. And during my tenure in the legislature, I saw that play out again and again and again. My mission is to be the governor for the entire state, because no matter where you live, you want to make certain your children have access to a great education from cradle all the way to starting their careers. You want to make certain that your family has health care. And that's something that has become even more acute during this pandemic. You want to make sure that you can make a living for yourself and your family, that we have got good jobs, or if you're self-employed, that you can make a living. And that doesn't, it doesn't matter what your zip code is, what your background is. You want that because you live here and you expect to be able to have access. And I want people to know that I'm running to be the governor of the entire state, to serve the entire state, not just the people who agree with me, not just the people who like me, but the people who don't like me, the people who won't vote for me. I want to serve all of Georgia, and I want us to think about the state not as 159 different counties or three or four different regions. I want us to think about ourselves as a diverse set of communities that have come together like a family. We are one family. We are one Georgia. We're talking to Stacey Abrams on Hashtag She Talk four years ago. She lost the gubernatorial race here in Georgia by about 50,000 votes. She is back. A lot of people are watching what's happening in Washington, whether you believe the polls or not. President Joe Biden's approval ratings seem to be slipping, and that's across Republicans, Democrats, whatever. Do you think President Joe Biden's approval ratings will be influential in Georgia's gubernatorial race? I think that it matters that we show what what's happening here in Georgia. And because of President Joe Biden, Senator Raphael Warnock, Senator John Ossoff, we have seen billions of dollars come into Georgia to help help all of us, to help communities stay alive, to help make certain that we were funding schools. A lot of the money that you're going to watch the governor give out and pretend that he had something to do with, it came about because of President Joe Biden, because of Senator Raphael Warnock, because of Senator Ossoff. And we deserve a governor that can work with national leadership to ensure that the critical resources that Georgians need are actually adequately dispersed. We know that under this governor, he held off on dispersing money to help families that were facing eviction. He didn't do his job. We know that black Georgians who needed unemployment were denied access and that the governor did not do the work of compelling action on their behalf. We need a governor who can work with the president, work with our senators and work with our communities. And right now, that's not what we have. But I know that we have leadership through Senator Raphael Warnock and Senator John Ossoff that is grounded here in Georgia, that loves Georgia. And I believe that's how we win Georgia, by showing what we've accomplished, showing what more we can do, and making certain that Georgians know that as governor of Georgia, I will be their partner in delivering those resources to our communities. Speaking of our current governor, Brian Kemp, a lot of people are praising him for how he reopened the state of Georgia during the pandemic. Of course, you know, one of the first states to do that. What, as you look back in hindsight, if anything, would Stacey Abrams have done differently? I believe that it's always important to think about everyone. And we know that Brian Kemp didn't involve workers in the conversation. We've got a lot of folks who never had the choice about whether to go back to work or not. They were forced to do so because of his order. They didn't have PPE when they got back to work. 
These are workers who often don't have health insurance. And so the most vulnerable people in our state, the people who had the most inflexible jobs, didn't have the support they needed. So I would have made certain that PPP, PPE for workers was in place. I would have made certain that we were talking to workers, not just to the bosses, but to the workers, the people who were being put at risk. I would have held big companies accountable for failing to protect workers. Brian Kemp did the opposite. I would have worked in partnership with counties and schools to figure out the best solutions instead of doing what he did, was basically leaving them to figure out everything on their own. I would have made certain that there was full transparency always about what's happening. Even today, we know that the Georgia Department of Public Health has announced it's only going to update daily case counts for the public once a week, although the agency will have the information. People need to make decisions, and we don't know what we need to, we don't know if it's the Monday report that we need or the Thursday report that we need. But as governor, we need to ensure full transparency about infection and infection rates, especially as these subvariants rise in other states. Right now, Georgia is not leading the way, but we have more than once been the tip of the spear. And I would have, as governor, made certain that we were being transparent and responsive for everyone. I wouldn't have pulled away from communities that needed access to vaccines by saying that people were just not motivated to get it. We've got to think about communities that don't have access to QR codes. We don't have access to the resources that so many Georgians might take for granted. That's why I keep talking about One Georgia. We need a governor who's thinking about all of Georgia, not the people who already have what they need, but the people who need leadership to get where they need to go. And that's why I want to be governor. And Stacey, when you went out on this one Georgia tour, you were in front of a lot of people. Did you feel like, especially in these rural communities, that people felt as if they were forgotten about? Absolutely. Over and over again, I heard from folks. I mean, when I was in Cuthbert, Georgia, they had their hospital shut down during the pandemic. A woman lost her aunt during the pandemic because Governor Kemp refuses to expand Medicaid. It's not that he doesn't understand it. He knows that this isn't partisan. Mike Pence expanded Medicaid. John Kasich, the Republican governor of Ohio, expanded Medicaid. It's not about the money. It will bring $3.5 billion to Georgia, 64,000 jobs. The single largest economic development program in Georgia history would be Medicaid expansion. And it's not an experiment anymore. We know it works. We've seen it work in Democratic-led states, in Republican-led states. The only reason I can fathom for Brian Kemp not to expand Medicaid is because he doesn't care. And why, how can we have a governor for all of Georgia who doesn't care about the pockets of Georgia that need him the most? And the sad thing is he has no interest in changing his mind. We know that Governor Kemp, if he is reelected, will continue to say no to communities that are working hard and trying to do better. And he knows that it takes a little bit of investment to lift them up and he does not care enough to do it. Stacey Abrams lost to Governor Brian Kemp by 50,000 votes as we're waiting to see in the primaries coming up in about a month and a half who her opponent will be as you continue to push for one Georgia. We're heading to the polls, obviously, in 2022. You were known as an advocate, a strong advocate, you know, paving the way for what you deem is voter suppression. Is that still a concern for you as we head to the polls this year? It remains a concern because, unfortunately, Governor Kemp has continued through his governorship what he did when he was Secretary of State, and that has put up barriers to the right to vote. We know that it is now more complicated to get access to an absentee ballot. It's more complicated to return that ballot. We know that communities that are under-resourced can't necessarily expect they'll get more resources because they've tried to put blocks in place to help communities expand access to the right to vote. We know that if you need to return your ballot, because you were working double shifts just trying to make ends meet. You can't just drop it off in a drop box because those are now going to be inside and the doors are going to lock behind them. We know that if you have to stand in long lines in Georgia and if you are African-American or a person of color in Georgia, you are more likely to wait in line for a much longer period of time. That No one can bring you water. No one can bring you food. And for those who say, well, you should plan ahead, no one should have to plan to be in line to vote for four hours. No one should have to plan to have their kids with them as they're waiting to move through that line. And so we know that, unfortunately, voter suppression is alive and well in Georgia. But we also know that when we know what's out there, we can fight back. And that's the work that we're going to be doing in this campaign. It's the work I've done both as a private citizen and as a candidate. And that is making sure that people understand that voter suppression can be defeated, but it can only be defeated by voter turnout. Those who say that turnout proves there's no suppression, that's like saying that, you know, because there are more people in the water, there are no sharks. 
there's still sharks in the water. Voter suppression still out there. But when we overwhelm it with our presence, more people get through. More people get their voices heard. And that's going to be our mission. Not letting voter suppression stop us, making certain it galvanizes us to do everything we can to turn out all of the voters in Georgia so that they can make the decision about what comes next. Cityhood movements around the state of Georgia, primarily we see it a lot, Metro Atlanta, full disclosure, I'm a Buckhead resident. I just wanted an opportunity to vote for cityhood for Buckhead, but that seems to be popping up all over the place. Are you against these cityhood movements, in particular Buckhead succeeding from Atlanta? I disagree with Buckhead succeeding from Atlanta because dividing a city that has joint obligations, bond obligations, joint responsibilities is deeply problematic and has never happened in the state of Georgia. We do not divide cities in half. And I think it sets a very, very troubling precedent. Writ large, I think that if you want to create a city, you have to look at the whole construct. And one of the challenges with creating cities is if we don't tell the whole truth about how much it costs to run a city, or also what galvanizes the creation of cities. We've got counties that have become so municipalized that it does make sense to allow the remaining unincorporated areas to incorporate. But we have to be very careful about what we do because our Constitution allocates resources differently for cities and counties. And until we're willing to update our Constitution and update our rules to make certain that these cities can thrive, we are creating challenges without being fully transparent with the people. And so my issue isn't yes or no. It is making sure that we're being honest, thoughtful, and pragmatic about what we're creating. But Buckhead is a standalone issue. Buckhead is dividing a city where together the citizens of Atlanta made decisions and letting some people decide to abdicate those responsibilities is deeply problematic, and I don't support Buckhead. Stacy, before we let you go, there are people listening who are undecided about how they will vote. Aside from what you've already stated, what is your message to those people who don't know whether they're going to vote for you or your Republican challenger? I believe in Georgia. I am someone who has benefited from the opportunity to thrive. Uh, very publicly, has a lot of debt, was working hard trying to make ends meet, face medical debt faced challenges, and I was able to, to do better. And I want that for every Georgian. I believe in success. I believe in being able to start your own small business and watch it thrive. I know what happens when it doesn't. I believe in access to health care, not only because it's the right thing to do to take care of other people, but because it costs the rest of us money. It costs us $2.7 billion in this state for people not to have health insurance. I want our money back. I want the money that we've put into the system to come back to Georgia. $3.5 billion belongs to Georgians, and I want us to get our money. I want us to take care of our people. I want to make certain that rural Georgia is starting to thrive again because it is part of the state. And when rural Georgia does better, we all do better. I believe in success. That is what I want. I want people to have the opportunity to thrive because I know what it feels like when you don't have access, and I've seen what happens when you do have access. I'm running for governor to make certain that we have health care, that we have education, that we have jobs for everyone who's willing to do their part. But the government's got to do its part as well. No, government can't solve every problem, but it's got to be a partner in solving the problems we have. And I want to be the leader of a government that serves all of Georgia. And I encourage people to go to stacyabrams.com to learn more about how I want to do that. Stacey Abrams on Hashtag She Talk as all national political eyes on the great state of Georgia for the hotly contested gubernatorial race. Thanks again, Stacey Abrams, for joining us. Thank you for having me. And thank you for listening to another edition of Hashtag She Talk. If you want that replay, it will be on our Word on the Street Facebook and Twitter page. If you'd like to weigh in on what you just heard the sole Democratic gubernatorial candidate for the great state of Georgia talk about, we're here for it. 404 872 750 1-800-WSB Talk. The conversation on the hottest party on Talk Radio continues right after this.